Okay, so why don't we uh, why don't we do that? You know, just um, pray and release forgiveness. Um, <laughs> so Anand is like, oh, not again. No, huh? Question. Okay, okay. What about plus like for personally is okay. So what about the people saying thing, uh, doing things against the ministry? So suppose on pastor is like in the way of prosecution. So I I, I heard something like if we are forgiving, if uh, God start revenging, it will be a judgment for them in the world. So I literally I faced like on situation like uh, on person did black magic against on pastor. And like they're praying on their all family, they did the person did. So what that night happened is, and they are like very big uh, team for black magic. The person who did black black magic, he felt like like not felt he literally got attacked from another one, but he's saying it's not a demon. Uh, and like he he's alive now, but he can't walk and do anything but the reason why they are saying is not a demon they did all things like uh, demons should not come back a uh, lot of things are there and that uh, that person I, like people are saying like is it like a, that anything whatever i have heard that uh, when when they do this and when it's not effective it actually goes and attacks them you know so that's what I've I've heard. I don't know. Um, but but to your question is okay. Was this a judgment of God? Right? What was God protecting, and therefore did God did um, do this? Um, I, my opinion is that you know because it was a witchcraft kind of a thing. I I just feel that it was just the demon coming back and doing it. And demons lie all the time. You know, it's not like they are not bound by a covenant not to do it or keep up their end of the responsibility and all this. So they. They attack. They do this. So, uh, they're not. Um, see, he's called the he's called the father of lies. So, which means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not killed him. I kind of uh, did damaged him and etc. Yeah. There's no loyalty, no sense of. Uh, so um, yeah, so I would say, um, but is it a judgment of God? Not really, because the thing is, uh, so when we look at the finished work of Jesus on the cross, it is to give life, and when you look at the life of Jesus, also you know the Peter drew his sword and cut off that ear of that uh, high priest servant, no. But if you look at Jesus' uh, response, yeah, he healed him in that, you know, in that moment. So, so the Lord, the Lord's way of dealing with people is um, see. There are certain times when uh, I would say you know, people put themselves out of, you know, they just open doors and they move out of, you know, God's. Uh, it's nothing like God not reach able to reach them, but they intentionally move out of, you know, God's reach and try to do things uh, rebelliously and they face the consequence of it right but god's way of dealing with people and bringing them to restoration and repentance is a display of his goodness because scripture talks about the fact that the goodness of god leads one to repentance right so so that's always his method um, yes that is primary method yes people can put themselves uh, in a place where there's some accident or something, and then and then they look to God. Yes, that also happens. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So. So uh, when we mm. yeah, so a person actually, yeah, the way to look at it is this, you know. So 
the wrath of God was poured out on the cross on Jesus, who took our judgment, who took our place. Right? You know, not just good believers, but for everyone. You know, the one who's taunting, the one who's persecuting, the one who's so he did it upon. You know, and then we have access to it by faith. It's the grace of God, right? So, so that's that's the thing. So he faced it. He did it. And that is why, you know, on we are as people who are living on this side of the cross, on this side of the cross, uh, you know, it's not that old dispensation, but this side of the cross, um, yeah, for us, it's the grace of God and the goodness of God which is reaching out to us. Yes, I'm not saying that, you know, these kind of things do not happen because we move out, we intentionally step out and face the consequence of it. And God touches us in those circumstances also. You know, if it's on a hospital bed, looking at the ceiling, that someone has to come, you know, come to terms with God. Yes, it happens then also. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that is, that is my understanding of it. When we look at scripture, the entirety of scripture, this is what we see. Yeah. See, the, the ones who do not, uh, like if you see, um, um, okay, we're kind of digressing a little, but uh, anyway, we'll just quickly see, like J John 3, right? Um, John chapter 3, the Lord's conversation with um, Nicodemus, right? So he says, um, and we go down to verse 15, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God so loved the world, uh, that is 16, right? God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believe, believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. So everybody is covered with condemnation already, but that is removed when one comes to Christ. So that's about it. So everybody is under judgment already, you know, facing the wrath and on the way to a destiny which is apart from God already. Um, you know, they are dead to God, alive to sin, exposing themselves, opening doors for the enemy to attack their lives. Already they are under that. Um, but when we come to God, um, yeah. So that's the thing. Right? Okay, prayer time. <laughs> <laughs> Praying the toughest prayers of our lives. Let's do that. Okay, let's. Uh, so, online students also, just take some time. Okay, if there's anything, and I know if there's anything specifically that you just ask the Holy Spirit, I'm sure He will reveal what is it that you are still holding on in your life that you've not, uh, you know, forgiving yourself for, right? Um, that God has forgiven, that His grace is covered, His blood is covered, but you're, you know, kind of trying to. You know, drag it out of under the blood. <laughs> you know, uh, so yeah. So let's just quickly you know, take some time, um, however you, way you want it. Just talk to the Lord, and if there's something that He's bringing to mind, um, you know, bring that specifically, um, and ask for forgiveness. Right? Say, I forgive myself.
father god we yeah we receive healing lord from you and whom you have forgiven lord uh, we have no right to hold a grudge against ourselves father god we uh, we are just here to say that we are sorry for the way that we have uh, punished ourselves um by maybe not drawing near to you distancing ourselves from you distancing ourselves from people uh distancing ourselves from things that we love and enjoy god in the right way um and master i pray um right now for the work of your spirit lord even as we choose to say even as we are willing to say that yes uh we forgive ourselves and uh, look at ourselves the way you see us lord as the righteousness of god in christ jesus um as new creations as ones who are justified and sanctified yes lord we have used these words we have you know kind of thought about these words but lord it really doesn't mean anything if we are still holding things bitter against ourselves and so god i i pray uh maybe in the recent past or maybe in the distant past lord whatever things that have happened in our lives whatever things that intentionally or unintentionally that we uh lot that we did that we said god um i just pray lord even as we bring it under the blood the blood of jesus um that perfect sacrifice uh, which is still powerful enough to cleanse and and just um uh, and destroy the body of sin god we we thank you for your faithfulness in forgiving us of all unrighteousness lord and and we we realize that all unrighteousness uh, means all and so god we thank you as per 1 john 19 lord you are faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness and so god we we forgive ourselves lord even today god we thank you god in jesus name we pray amen amen man okay um so so you know the the thing is this that um um when we forgive ourselves again just like how we us there is this whole thing coming over and over again okay uh, maybe it was just a thought maybe it was just a uh, maybe just a emotion that you felt and um you know maybe you're not worth it etc you know these things come again so that is when we embrace over and above our feelings or emotions we embrace the truth of god's word right what god says about us what god declares about us we we take that at his word right uh and then say god this is this is what you say about me this is what you believe about me this is what you declare about me and so i come in agreement with that right so it's it's not it's not being boastful you now sometimes we look at these thing oh i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and then it's not an arrogant you know we're not speaking that out so saying that out from a place of being arrogant or boastful okay so it's a very humble act when we agree with god it's humility right when when he says that you are precious and we agree with him yes lord you know i am this in your eyes it's act of humility right okay so um when it comes to various aspects maybe rejection fear uh you know uh maybe we feel that okay we are not up to it you know we don't feel up to it up to you know when i say up to it i'm saying about i don't feel adequate enough to carry out a particular task i don't feel qualified enough i don't feel you know educated enough or wealthy enough and all these things um we go with what god says right we we go with what god says we're not saying that hey, this is not true in the sense okay uh, maybe i i you know maybe we are not educated enough you know we saying okay i didn't pass my school or i didn't do a degree or whatever it is that's a fact okay that's a fact the facts are okay we don't have these natural qualifications that's a fact but god's word goes beyond the fact and um, it is the truth right it doesn't hide the fact okay this is what it is okay maybe in the natural you don't have this you don't have you know these 
educational qualifications we don't have this bank balance etc but god's words there goes beyond that and saying that i will lead you in a triumphant procession in christ jesus or you know things like the plans that i have for you despite all this right despite all disqualifications in the eyes of the world despite all you know everything that doesn't seem to be okay despite all that the lord says the plans that i have for you are good good plans plans to prosper you not to harm you right jeremiah 29 11 so so that is what we go with that is what we hold on to right the truth of god's word okay so and this is not a one time thing again this is something that we go to over and over again say god your word goes beyond the circumstance goes beyond the present whatever you are declaring okay okay then the other thing that we can do so what are we looking at we are looking at some of these some of these steps that we can take to just walk into healing and deliverance right um just by ourselves in the presence of god just looking at our own lives and making these choices we step into healing and deliverance which comes from god right so the most uh, uh, this uh, the other thing that we need we to do is to renounce lies what does renounce mean renounce means to let go reject right renounce lies okay so um we could be believing something very sincerely about ourselves about our future that could be a lie okay so so it's a good exercise just to list down okay what are the lies that i'm believing about myself okay um and to counter that with the truth because a lie always leads to um um leads to a life of imprisonment right always holds you back a lie always does that right a lie does not lead us into liberty or freedom like a lie seems to you know seems to do that but it's very deceptive okay lie always leads us to imprisonment to bondage and which is why the the holy spirit he is called wherever the spirit is there is freedom and liberty right because the lord jesus says that the spirit of god the holy spirit he will lead us into all truth right and truth liberates truth always you know liberates opens up and there's freedom okay so um renounce the lies and uh, in its place accept the truth of god's word right okay so it's a it's a daily thing right we we whenever we read the word of god suddenly we realize hey this is what i've been believing about myself but actually god's word says something else right uh, this is what i've been thinking about myself or about my situation um based on the experience based on what is to my senses what i see what i hear this is what i think about my situation but then uh, god your word says something else so i'm choosing that right okay um close all doors okay so that means that anything that i might have out of ignorance or intentionally i could have opened a uh, um uh, access point for the enemy okay so out of ignorance maybe some some dedication some ritual uh, that i participated in and uh, you know something that i invited you know something um so that dedicates my life to uh to powers of darkness whatever and it could also be some things that uh, you know uh, for example some artifacts or something that is dedicated to the powers of darkness and then we kind of bring it and keep it and so on so these things can be cancelled and uh, certain open doors can be our lifestyle also like a lifestyle of sin a lifestyle of um like even a lifestyle of unforgiveness for example right a lifestyle of open rebellion no these things can be open doors right and uh, a foothold for the enemy to come and and uh, and wreak you know havoc in our lives so whatever those are we can actually 
cancel it. So when we cancel it, how do we cancel it? We just declare it. Declare it null and void, declare it cancel. Okay. Um, like I I remember like when we one once when we went to pray for someone, there is a there's this lady who was who was actually completely taken over by the spirit. So so we, we literally had to cancel all dedications that were made over her. You know, like this thing is very stubborn. So, but when we prayed and canceled those dedications, you know, maybe probably the parents did it, whatever. And we took authority and canceled those dedications. And then she experienced freedom. So it could be something, you know, something that they had done. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so something that we can pray like this, you know, in Jesus' name, I cancel, uh, negate, nullify all dedications, prayers, rituals, sacrifices, vows. Okay, so it covers everything made by me or my ancestors to fa false gods or goddesses. Uh, I cancel the effects of any of my or my ancestors' involvement in the occult and in occult practices. I declare in Jesus' name that I sever, sever means to cut all ties towards these demonic powers. In Jesus' name, I renounce all associations with demonic spirits. Okay, um, And also, you know, cancel all curses or spells or witchcraft or enchantments, enchantments or anything. You cancel it. So we have, you know, we have the greater one. We have the authority. So we can actually cancel it. You know, not out, not with the fear or apprehension, but with the confidence and faith that we have in Christ. Right? We declare it cancelled in Jesus' name and experience freedom. Okay. Um, if there are, you know, spirits that are opposing, oppressing, influencing, that also we cast out, right? Over our own lives. Can evil spirits oppress us? What do you think? Oppress, obviously, right? Uh, can evil spirits influence us? Yes. Right. Deception, lies, fears, accusations. Yeah. And so when we realize that, hey, I'm not supposed to be like this. You know, I, I'm, I'm under this oppression. I'm supposed to be walking free. Why am I giving way to this? Why am I giving place for fear? You know, this repeated fear. I get, wake up in the morning and this heart is captured with fear. Go to bed at night. Again, fearful. Why should we live like that, right? All this weight of oppression of, you know, some something bad will happen. Why should you give way for that, right? So you cancel every influence of the enemy, every um, oppression or weight of the enemy. We cancel it in Jesus' name, right? And um, and cast out their influence, cast out their activity, and um, and you just declare, okay. This prayer is very, you know, uh, it says, okay, I shut every door to these evil spirits and declare they have no more access or entrance into my life. I'm washed, cleansed, and covered by the blood of Jesus. I'm redeemed and purchased by the blood. I'm God's property, and the devil has no claim over me. I am free in Jesus' name. Okay. Okay, why don't we just say that out? Okay. Um, I'll say that. You repeat it. Okay, online students also you can. Don't unmute your mic. <laughs> There'll be chaos. Okay, so let's say this. Okay, in Jesus' name, I shut every door to these evil spirits and declare they have no more access or entrance into my life. I'm washed, cleansed, and covered by the blood of Jesus. I'm redeemed and purchased by the blood. I am God's property. And the devil has no claim over me. I am free in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. So um, so many times when we, when we declare that, right, uh, we experience freedom in our minds. You know, I remember once when I was just, uh, I was working in sales and I was coming back home, and there was so much fear, so much fear, so much of heaviness, because uh, I was not sure whether I'll have my job. By the end of the month, I had not achieved my targets. So I'm just coming back home, and I'm like thinking, oh, God, bills to be paid, rent to be paid. 
so much of expenses and I'm living in a city like Bangalore and if I lose my job because it was I think two months that I not achieved my targets and yeah, they can be very brutal you know you might be great friends and all but then you didn't achieve your targets you will leave out so so much of heaviness and then I realized okay just then you know learning about confessing the word learning about the authority that we have etc so I just started declaring that declaring god's word you know i'm i'm a child of god you know i'm i'm a vict- i'm victorious in christ this oppression does not have any hold over me fear has no o- hold over me and i just started speaking that declaring that and suddenly you know just felt that weight off which would not have happened any other way right i could not have you know just uh, psyched myself or motivated myself no this would not have happened because it's a spiritual thing right it's a spiritual way and it has to be dealt with spiritual weapons which is god's word the spirit of god right it will it will go only with the spiritual weapons because it's a spiritual attack so um so i realized that and uh, and then i realized hey this is what i need to do you know i need to take authority but many times we don't feel like it if you feel like we feel so encouraged i'm sorry so discouraged and down that we don't feel like even declaring it I say feel like okay I've done it so many times and yet again I'm just feeling uh you know we just down just let it go but those are the times when we need to rise up right and declare yeah, okay um yeah it, it doesn't mean that you need to shout it out it can be a simple declaration you know, speaking it right? because that's truth that's being declared okay okay a uh, couple of other things consecrate yourself to the lord okay so i just want to read uh, what romans talks about um romans talks about the fact that we are more than conquer i mean um, that sin has no dominion over us but also talks about uh, how we need to present ourselves to the lord okay i'm uh, uh, chapter 6 romans chapter 6 Okay so Romans chapter 6 uh, and verse verse 4 okay therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the father even so we should also walk we should walk in the newness of life okay then it all the way goes down to verse 14 for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace okay since shall not have dominion over you and uh, if you go down to um, verse 22 it says but now having been set free again about the past right about the cross what happened on the cross so he's saying having been set free from sin and having become slaves of god you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life okay um uh, verse 19 just as you presented your members as slaves to uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness you know i like the term slaves of righteousness right <laughs> you know slave to righteousness which means that okay i'm a helpless Uh, i don't have my own you know rights but i have to do the right thing slaves of righteousness for holiness and um, one other verse is uh, it's an instruction verse 13 do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves to god as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to god so verse 13 and um, verse 19 when we look at it it says he's talking about presenting ourselves you know giving ourselves holy to god talking about all our faculties or our, you know everything our members to god so that is in a word you know in a way that is consecration that is setting ourselves apart right so many times when we think about setting ourselves apart we think about isolation i'm removing myself all people's church all people's <laughs> i want to move to where i am i can be alone i don't want you know I, isolation insulation 
that is not consecration. Consecration is in the midst of where we are, but we are presenting ourselves to God. Right? That is one major part of it. it. It's not about separation, but it's actually about surrender, about yielding. So when we surrender, when we yield, when we present ourselves to God, then the other part of walking in separation or walking in, um, you know, walking in and not really in, uh, being um, getting entangled in in sin that becomes an outflow of it a natural outflow of it when i present myself to god my faculty my my members everything to god as a slave of righteousness right so yeah so this prayer you know in jesus name i consecrate my entire being to you i consecrate my spirit soul body and completely and wholly to you and to you alone my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is not for sin or sickness or any evil work. My soul belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. I consecrate my emotions, feelings, appetites, passions, desires, all to the Lord Jesus, and they are holy unto God. Right. So that is something that we we can do. Uh, we can consecrate. So this, these these are things that we can actually do from time to time. Right. Uh, Maybe in our quiet times, we can just, you know, still it becomes part of us where we are, you know, just walking through these steps. It becomes second nature, right? Okay. And then uh, we welcome the work of the Holy Spirit because we know that's the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit which breaks every yoke, every bondage, and sets us free, right? So you, you welcome the Spirit of God uh, to heal um, and to fill and to release cleanse everything you know, to energize us empower us to do god's will right okay so um you know these 10 10 steps um just go through it you know one one more time and see how you can just apply it in your life you know maybe in your quiet time uh you know maybe today or some other time just go through it right and take time each of these steps you know i know we kind of went through it uh, certain places where we stopped and spent time but then you take time take time with god so sit with god and um, uh, be aware of the presence of the holy spirit be sensitive to what the holy spirit's um, you know uh, what, what what the spirit of god is speaking dropping into our hearts and do do it accordingly you know and then we will see that there is much freedom at the end of it. Right? It's like cleaning. It's like complete, um, you know, I don't know, complete cleaning. You know, there's a lot of everything goes right when you open up and clean. You see that oh my God, so much of dust, so much of things that are there. You know, because we didn't move certain, you know, certain stool or some some you know something that was there. It's accumulated dust. And suddenly you realize, oh my God, so many cockroaches. So, you know, where did they come from? They're all there, right? And they all leave uh, when there's the work of the, you know, the, the cleansing of the Holy Spirit, right? All those hidden things, they all leave as well. Okay. Any questions? Any thoughts? Um, so, you know, so these are these are things that we do, but there are certain things that we can do ad adopt or adapt as a lifestyle, okay, as a lifestyle change. Which means, um, yeah, yes, Nina. Sorry, um, before we go in, you have a question. Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, I, I maybe I was not able to hear the whole of it when that thing was being discussed. Uh, there, at one point of time, there was a um, in the part of the discussion. Uh, yeah. There was something that came out saying that so that, I mean, why we have to raise our voice against something because so that it may not be repeated. So yeah, yeah. Uh, in what context was that that uh, we need to? Yeah, so um, the, the question was about justice. And um, so, you know, personally, uh, forgiving the offender, um, but in what? In what situations should we, you know, so if, does forgiving the offender mean that we don't report the matter? You know, let's say the person breaks the law, uh, steals something or hurts someone. Um, do we, 
uh, now justice needs to be done so do we uh, do we report the matter or not report the matter you know let's say we want to forgive so do we not report the matter at all so my opinion was that yes we forgive from our heart but if we sense that you know this we this can be something that is a repeated can be repeat, repeated offense and damage others lives and property and so on so then we need to re report the matter so that correction can be brought to the individual and sometimes it is in a correctional facility like a prison or whatever you know so that is what we were talking about um does that help um i'm sorry i think you know, okay yeah fine yeah and I, i was also sharing about how you know maybe in a family setting when we know the person and still that person wrongs you um when we would have the conversation with that person you know having we forgive but then we have the conversation to point out that the person is what they have done is wrong maybe it's a financial matter or something else where they have done is wrong and then um that should not be repeated and so on maybe you know maybe have the opportunity and the relationship and the setting to address it and to you know talk about it which may not be the case when you know a person comes a perfect stranger comes steal something or you know hurt someone and then you know runs away yeah okay okay so we we're talking about uh, lifestyle changes you know adapt certain things as a lifestyle which means that you know cutting away anything that is sinful okay that can be a lifestyle change okay in the natural maybe the doctor saying please don't have sugar okay so that's a lifestyle change and saying how can i do that i mean morning cup of coffee i need to have sugar and uh, you know after every meal i need to have that chocolate but the doctor saying don't okay so a lifestyle change is a little difficult to adapt is a little difficult on our body difficult on our emotions etc are there certain things which are drawing you back to sin which are weighing you down you know what hebrews talks about the weights that are slowing you down right and the sin that entangles that needs to be cut away that needs to be cut away you know certain things are like hey um, but it doesn't seem to affect the other person why me right the other person is fine well when you know that it affects you you cut it off that's the thing right uh for example like eating beef and prawns may not affect you but for someone else it's like all bottom it's a, it's an allergic thing they're saying hey i had prawns and everything i looks and all like you know it's kind of swollen up and all that so they need to avoid right or deal with it huh you have a allergic reaction whatever it and i'm saying that you know we we cannot say hey that person is not affected therefore you know i can continue you know that person why, why is that person but if it affects you you know if it's drawing you yeah yeah and in that beef thing uh, so before yeah, example, okay. so like what happened is like for me before is to have that problem uh, especially for beef and mutton so i hear from one brother he saying like uh, his brother had a problem like this prayer it will so then i believe and i eat after that it's not came again so you need to pray please so that allow please lay hands and pray even i want to have more of this regularly so <laughs> okay so you prayed and then okay any anything specifically that you prayed or did you i just believed like okay it's not going to affect me so what what was it? how was it affecting you like bum like first i will start coughing okay. something irritating on chest and all then i will start coughing if i adjust for coughing it is 
gone but if i on start it will be affecting then all things will come here and there. Like, like bubbles and all bubbles yeah, yeah. so I, oh, yeah, if, is, then it start itching okay so why don't you pray uh, for anyone everyone with food, food allergies okay so anyone else has food allergies okay online anyone has food allergies so francis you pray since uh, you've seen victory in this area, okay, so so just pray, pray and release that uh, that breakthrough, okay. So just pray and say, uh, yeah, yeah. So we are all believing, <laughs> right? Online folks, we are all believing. Go for it. Just pray and um, pray in faith. You know, whatever faith you had, uh, you believed and you received that breakthrough. So just go ahead. Yeah. Very quickly. Hello, Father. Thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. Thank you for your releasing the healing. Thank you for you are the provider. Lord Jesus, which miracle you did for me in my life. As we are believing on you, you are the miracle worker. Lord Jesus, whoever is going through that problem, any food allergies, Lord Jesus, they have the passion and like to eat that, but they are not able to eat. Oh, Jesus, you are Father. You know everything, Lord. You know our heart. Oh, Jesus, thank you for your night now. You are releasing the healing. You are releasing the provision, whichever we are going through. Oh, Jesus, anybody's having that issue, you know, any allergies, right now we are releasing the healing on that particular problem, Lord. You are the Jehovah Rapha. You are the miracle working God. We are declaring the healing over the body and over the food which is affecting on the body. Right now, in Jesus' name, we are declaring healing. Amen. 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 I receive it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for praying. So, okay, guys. Uh, uh, so, any testimonies you can test and share? uh in the coming days right okay okay so yeah so we're talking about uh why, why did we get into beef and prawns uh, <laughs> okay okay as an example it started so that became a life lesson for us and a ministry time in prayer wow praise god okay so yeah um so yeah so we we cut off all those things that are you know influencing and drawing us back okay uh, second thing is uh, renewing our mind with God's word. We know, you know, we've studied, we know that it's a continuous thing. There are various aspects or various areas of our lives that are in various levels of renewal. Right? And the proof of renewing of our minds is changed behavior. Romans 12 talks about be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the transformation, which is when I'm saying behavior, I'm talking about our thought patterns, our speech, our you know, our interactions with people, God, everything, you know. So that changed, transformed behavior is the proof of the mind being renewed or adequately renewed by the truth of God's word. So um, which is a constant thing. And it's a beautiful thing, you know, like we have the word of God, which is spirit and life, Jesus said, something to take and change our thinking and it's a joy to see our behavior change because that's the key to transformation like people are just struggling and saying how, how do i change how do i change um, i'm struggling in, in all my behavior and addictions and so on this is the key and this is need this needs to be a continuous thing okay third thing develop a godly lifestyle uh, we're talking about maturing into christ likeness into all areas uh, that also part of our lives and um, and lastly um Whatever we need for a fruitful life, you know, these need not be quote unquote spiritual things alone, right? Uh, when I say quote unquote spiritual, you know, everything that God, uh, when we say mature into all things in Christ, it is not just knowledge of the word or the gifts of the spirit and so on. It is everything that that is part and parcel of our life, okay? Um, relationship skills time management money management uh, you know uh, sorry nutrition exercise all these things you know 
Um, so whatever is required, let it be an ongoing thing that we learn and develop and make it part of our lives. Okay. So don't look at it as, hey, this is worldly. right? It's not. It's about the life that God has given us to live, uh, to minister and so on. And these are skills that we would require. Um, communication, we require that. Um, and we can always get better at it, right? Um, to communicate well, to hear, to listen well, right? All these things we can. Uh, so have uh, an attitude of, okay, I want to learn, and I want to develop um, so that my life can be fruitful. And, uh, you know, by the fruit, the Father is glorified, right? By the fruit of my life, is glorified. So um, make let my life be fruitful. Okay, so uh, we'll stop here. Any any other further questions on this? Okay, no. Right. Okay, we'll stop here and then we'll continue next class. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Bye.